easy to copy, not too crazy. Here's 48 full hours in Paris. We're gonna have some fun. Oh, we sure did. So we're staying in London for a little bit of time. We're like, you know what, we need a little Paris. So we hopped on the Eurostar, headed to Paris. We did two days, three nights. Yeah. We had a blast. We'll take you through it with all the details you need to plan your perfect time in Paris. Hi, I'm Jordan. And I'm Erica. And we're your guides abroad. We've lived all over the world, but now feel most at home traveling. But don't worry, we're not just here to show you what we've done. We will tell you how to do it. You can think of us as your guides abroad. All right, Paris has so much to offer, obviously, and we have a very limited amount of time, but we are mm -hmm. keeping it culturally rich, interesting. We are throwing in some great food and don't worry, plenty of walking through those beautiful Paris streets. Go film, go film. <laughs> and if you don't wanna watch this full video, we have a one page download, which is one perfect day in Paris. It is free. So just click down below. It's our day two of this itinerary. All right, and with this itinerary, we are staying really on the beaten path past some very iconic locations because honestly, that's really what we wanted to see and enjoy. So I hope you enjoy that too. And a quick note on pronunciation. We are clearly not French. No. We are not French. We do our best. We try our hardest. And we're learning. And we are go. learning as we go. And I will say, when we lived in London, we made, I don't know, a dozen yeah. trips to Paris. These are getaway. We've improved a little since then. <laughs> That's this bold. <laughs> I hope. I hope. <laughs> All right, let's jump into day number one. Day zero was going from London to Paris. We took the Eurostar. We have a full video up above on tips on taking the Eurostar. And that got us to Garden North Station, which we hopped on a metro to get to our flat, which was in. We were in the seventh arrondissement, which was a really close location to the Eiffel Tower, which we had a view of the Eiffel Tower, which yeah. is really cool from our from our apartment. Yeah, the seventh is nice because it's full of a lot of boutique hotels and a lot of great places to eat. Like the mm -hmm. Rue Claire Street has a lot of great little cafes and places to eat on it. Oh, yeah. So take a look at staying in that area for our flat. Erica found it on Airbnb, I believe. Mm -hmm. It's really nice. It was up on the top floor, so it's a little bit of a hike up those old winding stairs. Mm -hmm. Is this a classic Parisian apartment building? Like I said, it had a little view of the Eiffel Tower, which we absolutely loved. We waited till nighttime for it to get all lit up. And it was a nice one bedroom, mm -hmm. nice bathroom, and then a nice living room area for all of us to sleep. So it was very comfortable for us. Find what's right for you, but we, like we mentioned, the seventh is a nice place to stay. It's yeah. a convenient residential yet close to the tourist sites. And one note is that it can get quite hot in Paris in mm -hmm. the summer. We did not have air conditioning, and luckily we were there a week before it got very hot. <laughs> but we, we were lucky we were able to sleep with the windows open. It was great. I <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we just got off the Eurostar from London. We arrived here in Paris late this afternoon, had a nice dinner with the kids. Now the first sight, it's gotta be the Eiffel Tower. It's, um, I've been here multiple times. I don't know if I'm getting older or what, but it's a lot bigger than what I remember. It really is. So we woke up, head out the flat. We're heading over from the 7th to the 6th mm. to go to a classic Art Deco Cafe, Cafe du Flore. And it was really cool. It's known for artists and philosophers to visit. Is this a really cool place? It's very, very, very famous. That means it's also very, very, very popular and crowded. A lot of people like to sit outside, so you can sit at the nice classic cafe tables and people watch and do all that stuff. It's a little easier for us to go inside. Oh, yeah. We got a table right away. We had our kids with us, which is okay. Everyone's friendly and stuff like that. Okay. Got hot chocolate for them, coffees for us. This is a really cool place because it hasn't really changed since World War II. Famous philosophers went there, like I said, even painters like Pablo Picasso used to go there. If Café de Flore is too busy for you, right across the street is... Le Du Mago. Which is another place that is famous for thinkers. My favorite existentialist, Albert Camus. Oh. He, yeah, he used to go there. So, The Stranger, great book. You have a favorite existentialist thinker. Yeah, what's your favorite one? <laughs> no. Blocked out. <laughs> so we are spending our day on the left bank today. We have started our morning in St. Germain. In the 1940s and 50s, this place was the birthplace of the existentialist movement. There were a lot of writers and thinkers in this area. Now it is a very high-end luxury area. Um, but we are starting our day here. We just went to Café du Flore. To be honest, I was going to skip it because it felt a little bit like it might be a tourist trap. 
It was wonderful. I ended up going there because apparently Ina Garten, the Barefoot Contessa goes there. And so I thought if she goes, we should go too. And it was delightful. And now we are on our way to the Luxembourg Gardens. <laughs> Before we head to the gardens, fun fact for especially for Americans out there, Saint-Germain neighborhood it was home to the York Hotel. In 1783, the Treaty of Paris was signed there. That ended the American Revolutionary War. Mm. So is the British, Americans there, Benjamin Franklin was there, John Adams, John Jay were present. And get this, there's a famous painting. They all stood afterwards, they're all sat, posed for a portrait to be done where the British delegates refused to post for the picture. Oh. So the painting is unfinished. I don't really blame the where's British. The I'd be like, I'm out of here. Yeah, where's the painting? I don't know. We'll I'm put it under down the bottom of the screen. Yeah, Great sorry. question. <laughs> You're the Smithsonian. Yeah. Okay, I'm just curious. It's out of my house. <laughs> Stop number two today is probably, I mean, maybe one of our favorite places in Paris. It's the Luxembourg Garden. So it was an 11 minute walk after breakfast, which was great and perfect. We could walk off that croissant. There we go. That we had, that coffee. And we just got to enjoy the garden. So this feels, it's huge. Luxembourg Gardens are large and they feel like an oasis from the busy streets of Paris. Exactly, there's big boardwalks to walk around on, there's like a little forest, there's the big basin where yeah. you sail the boats on, which our kids absolutely loved, highly mm -hmm. recommend doing that. Mm -hmm. There's 106 statues amongst the gardens, especially a lot of the French royal women and aristocrats and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And try to find it, there's a replica of the Statue of Liberty mm -hmm. in the garden, so see if you can find that one. Mm -hmm. Grab a chair, maybe you have a book, just sit down, relax, take it all in, watch the kids as they play with the sailboats. You play with the sailboats yourself if you don't oh. have kids. I mean, don't I gotta say, I was pretty entertained. We had two boats out there. <laughs> we always saw this and never did it. Now we're back here with our kids and I wish we would have done it like when we were, every other time we've come, this is fun. After the gardens, we headed back in the direction of Cafe de Fleur to a Mediterranean restaurant called Kukensage. It's about an 11 minute walk back. It was Mediterranean, mm -hmm. so they had vegan, vegetarian options. Also though, they're known for their burgers. The service was really friendly. It's really cute on the inside, easy for us to sit. It was a nice quick lunch. Really good, I it recommend really checking good. it out. Yeah, that was delicious. All right, stick with us because at this point, we had realized that we had skipped past a very important spot that we wanted to hit up. And that was Angelina's in front of the Musée de Luxembourg because we wanted to go get their hot chocolate because we had heard it is very famous, it is Thick, it is chocolatey, it is. The kids love it, even a hot summer day. It's oh, a, yeah. Angeline is a famous tea house in Paris. It's been around since 1903. They're very famous for, it's about seven euro hot chocolates. Yeah. And they even bottle it for you. Ooh. Check it out if it's your fancy. Yeah. I'm digging it, it's pretty amazing hot chocolate. Very thick, creamy, delicious. Just what you need on an 80 degree day. Yeah, it's cooking out here. <laughs> Warms my heart and soul. Literally and figuratively. So we got a correction on this itinerary, right? All right, we're going to do a boat tour next on the Seine, but do as we say, not as we did. We were hungry and we wanted to do like a picnic on the Eiffel Tower. So we did a 40 minute walk back to our flat. And on the way, we passed the Bon Marche department store, which is a very famous department store. And across the street is... Le Grand... I can't say it. Okay. <laughs> Le Grand L'Epicerie. And across the street is this amazing food hall. It's iconic. Don't show up hungry. Everything looks absolutely amazing in the inside mm -hmm. of it. So take a look at that if you'd like to. But what we recommend you do it from Luxembourg Gardens or from lunch, head to Pont Neuf, which is the famous old bridge mm -hmm. right by the Cathedral of Notre Dame and hop on a Seine boat trip. Yes. We did this from the Eiffel Tower. Yes. But they have these boat trips all over the place. They leave every 30 minutes to an hour. They're well priced. They're only about $20. They're one hour long. This is a great way to tour the Seine. You get great views. They, they give you a great, in multiple languages, they give you the history of all the buildings, all the bridges, yeah. all this really cool stuff. And it's fun to leave by Point Neuf because you're right by the Cathedral of Notre Dame. And also it's the oldest bridge in Paris. Oh, wow. Which it translates to the new bridge. Hmm. You know why they call it the new bridge? No. Because when it was built, the other bridges were around oh. it, were there. So they wanted to distinguish it from the older, older. bridges, to the mm -hmm. new bridges. That's it, the name stuck, it's a good name. Oh, that's a good name. Mm -hmm. So just to clarify, boat tour of the Seine is a great fun thing to do, especially in the evening. Like, oh yeah, it's, it's very nice. Yeah. Sounds touristy, but it's a great tourist I mean, thing to do. it is touristy, yeah. absolutely. But, but everyone but... getting off the boat looked very happy. Yeah, and, too. and there are two main places that you can leave from, either Pont Neuf, which would be very convenient for this itinerary, or the Eiffel Tower, which is where we left from. 
So it was nice. After the tour, it dropped it. It's round trip, takes an hour. And we got dropped off at the Eiffel Tower, which is perfect for us because we had a picnic lunch. Mm. We enjoyed it. They sell, guys are selling beers there and other drinks as they walk around. They're mm -hmm. not cheap, but it's pretty convenient. Yeah. And just enjoy the view of the Eiffel Tower at dusk. Okay, so we are closing out today with a picnic in front of the Eiffel Tower. This was a good day. It was a tiring day, but it was a really good day. I hope you will join us for day two tomorrow because we have some more fun in store. Okay, on to day two. Day two. Let's do it. If you haven't grabbed one yet, grab a crate. It's a good time to grab a crate. Good morning and welcome to day two. You're woken up, you're ready to go explore the city. Today we're gonna to go to the right bank and the left bank. Ooh. So we're gonna check out quite a few neighborhoods to get out there. And this day is a free download that we have, click down below. So you know where to make the reservations, pick your place for dinners, get the tickets. All that is described in the one page download. And don't worry, once you have that, at least you have one perfect day in Paris planned out. And you will find this on our website at yourguidesabroad.com slash Paris, where we have a full guide with this free download. That's helpful. Mm -hmm. And you probably won't have this on your itinerary unless you are staying in the same neighborhood we stayed in. But we did get a very substantial breakfast this morning at Cozy Basket. It was great pancakes and toast and like very much a non-French breakfast because it was very, very hearty. If you don't get a breakfast, there's lots of food places on our itinerary. There's cafes in Paris. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah she got the itinerary too. Like you said, if you stay in the seventh, Rue Claire is, is a great food street to grab some breakfast. Stop number two was a 17 minute metro ride for us. That was the most convenient thing to do. But these were my favorite things of the day. Was mm. starting off about 9 a.m. we start off, and that is at going to the original square of all of Europe. Mm. This is the the square, the park that gave everybody else in Europe the idea, like, hey, these are nice. Yeah. Also, too, is the first public park in all of Paris. All right, so we are starting our day in the Marais. We are here at the Place des Vosges. This was the first public park in Paris. And it was the inspiration for hundreds of different squares in Europe. It was nice going at 9 a.m. in the morning because it's really quiet there in the square. Mm. So you can just enjoy the fountains, look around. If you want a little bit more, give this Victor Hugo's house is on the corner. Oh. We'll link to it down below. You can do a free tour of it. And it was cool because I just finished The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Oh. And the book was actually written for like, it's like a love letter to Paris. Oh. At the time when he was around, they were like destroying a lot of the historical sites around Paris. So he wrote the book to tell like the Parisians, like, look, like amazing things that we have here, like the Cathedral of Notre Dame, that we want to keep because there's so much history here. Mm -hmm. So anyways, there's a lot to the book, more than just a hunchback. You know when you're in a park, they got like little subtle hints saying, stay off the grass. I'm getting that feeling in this park. From here, we did a walking tour of Lut Marais. It's a great neighborhood, it's trendy. It has a lot of history, it has cobblestone streets and like windy passageways. It was formed, it goes back to the Roman times, but in the 13th century, the Knight Templars lived there. It has a large Jewish community there that's also been there this, since the 13th century. So we walked around and then we went to a Jewish bakery to for some Jewish baked goods. Kids loved it, we loved it. It was a great little piece of culture too. It's a really cool neighborhood. Mm -hmm. The neighborhood means the marshlands because oh. there's like a low part of the city. So it's very flat, easy to walk around. So we kind of got there, get onto the next stop. We can definitely walk and tour the neighborhood as much as you like. We have a lot of food on this day, you'll yeah. find out. All right, right now we're heading to one of the oldest markets in Paris. I think it's the oldest one. It was formed in 1628. It is the market of the red children. Wow. Yeah, you know why they call them that? So an orphanage was next door. I don't know why I asked her these questions. It's not her fault. She's not supposed to know this stuff. So there was an orphanage next to this market. And apparently all the kids wore red because red was a, was the a color of charity. Oh. So it's the market of the red children. There you'll find a lot of like basic produce and flowers. Yes. We also find an eclectic mix of food, yes. food stalls. Yes. So you can have lunch here. For us, we just picked up some snacks. Some juice. It some was fresh, these really cute. Great. It was really nice. Yeah. And it was because it was like late mid morning, mm -hmm. it was it was a good stop because it wasn't too busy yet. They're all kind of waking up and opening up their shops. And as we mentioned, it does feel like we're doing a lot of food stops, but it's Paris, it's Paris first yeah. of all. <laughs> and second of all, it's because we are taking our time wandering through these really different and charming yeah. streets and you know small alleyways. We love the architecture, especially in mm -hmm. Paris, so we love walking through the streets. So now it's an 18 minute walk from the market to lunch. Yeah. Lunch opens at noon, but we made a quick stop at the Hotel de Ville, which is a municipal building, it's City Hall. Mm -hmm. And it was cool because they're advertising the Paris Olympics, which are coming this summer. Mm -hmm. And there's a big plaza to explore too. Okay, the sun's really bad right now, but it's a very pretty building. And you can also see Notre Dame right there. So if you want to head over to Notre Dame, this is an easy walk across the bridge. 
Lunch was excellent. Erica That's found it. It's your traditional restaurant, family owned and operated. Mm -hmm. It's on the banks of the Seine. We sat outside, which is actually very loud, yeah. but we recommend it. Yeah. And we got a small sliver of a view of Notre Dame. Yeah. That's how close we were to it. Yeah. So it was fun to have a traditional French lunch. We did salads and potatoes. We weren't big into steak, but we could help ourselves. We got a little bit of wine. Yeah, oh, we sure did. The next stop, we grab tickets for, so you might want to grab those in advance. You can take a 30 minute walk, or if you are just done with walking and you are tired of us, you can hop on the Metro for a couple stops and go to the Musée d'Orsay. So this is nice. You can either do the Musée d'Orsay or you can do the Louvre, which is just across the street. Yep. What we did was we didn't do the Louvre, but we went into the Tuileries, which is the garden, mm -hmm. and walked around that because we're curious to check it out. Mm -hmm. It was very busy and a little dusty and hot. <laughs> so we head over to the Air Condition Museum, which is one of our favorite museums in Paris. Absolutely. So this museum has about 140 Impressionist paintings in it. It's mm -hmm. Impressionism and Post-Impressionism. The building itself is in an old Beaux Arts railway station. So the building's absolutely gorgeous. Inside you'll find Monet, Monet, Dugas sculptures, Van Gogh's, you'll find um, Renoir's. It is absolutely amazing. And that wasn't too bad. I didn't do art history. I was a chemical engineer. Yeah. So yeah, that wasn't bad, huh? Well. Yeah, yeah, I didn't pretty do good. art history either. Clearly. All right, so we don't usually do this, but we wanted to get a picture at this museum. Yeah. So when we were pregnant with our son, we got a picture in front of the clock. And yeah. this is what is a railway station. So there's these beautiful big clocks out there. The place to get your photo here, because I'm sure you want to also, is on the fifth floor which is great because the fifth floor, you walk through all the most famous impressionist artists there. Mm -hmm. So we got a picture here when Henry was in her tummy. <laughs> and then we want to get another one, both the kids are already born. Yeah. So we're happy to get that one. You can spend two hours at this museum. Oh, easily. It's yeah. three stories. It's pretty busy too. I think it's the sixth most popular museum in the world to visit. Wow. But like we were, we moved through there a little faster, but do you, we have tickets down below to tour this museum. Definitely recommend booking in advance because there's like four different types of queues to get yeah. in. If you have the time slot, like we walked right in, mm -hmm. especially since we're going after lunch too, it wasn't that busy. Mm -hmm. So it's really nice. I think it's only closed on Mondays. We have more information down below and in our one page download. Once we were done with the museum, we headed back over to the Luxembourg Gardens because we truly, truly, truly love that place. But in our one page itinerary download that is free on our website, yourguidesabroad.com slash Paris, we recommend going for dinner in the Latin Quarter and we give you some options for places to eat. And how to make reservations and mm -hmm. all that good stuff. Oh yeah, important details. And then we suggest you take an evening walk in Paris. So we give all that information in the free one page download. Click below to learn more about that and to download it and have a wonderful trip to Paris. This summer in Paris is gonna be busy. Hit subscribe because we have more Paris videos coming out, especially travel tips and managing Paris this summer. So check that out. What's your favorite part about Paris that wasn't in the itinerary? Oh man, you're putting me on the spot. Every time. Every time. For me, we didn't get a chance to do it this time because you know, kids, but it's sitting outside on the street and having, having a little, cocktail and enjoying, you know, a late afternoon in the summer. You know, England's all about the pubs. Paris is all about the cafes. Yep. So I gotta admit, it can be hard to find a good Paris cafe. Some look touristy, yeah. some look like too bougie. And sometimes they're just very crowded too. So it's hard to find a seat yeah, in the yeah. very touristy. We will come out with like a cafe guide to Paris. Mm. Yeah, it's in, the, it's in the works, yeah. Okay, cool. I think this is kind of silly, but I like the Metro in Paris. Yeah. It's, it's a very different feel from the, the English underground system, the London yeah. underground system. The Metro is a little grittier, but it's fun to navigate the tunnels and get in there and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah, I, you I, do love the I like public transport. Oh yeah, you Especially do. on a hot summer day in the Metro, <laughs> it's an experience. So it's good, it's good. Yeah, leave a comment down below with your favorite tip on Paris or your experience in Paris, if you're still watching this video by now. If you are, great, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for watching. Yeah, wow. <laughs>